ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांत संदेश छाई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम पार्ट थर्टी सेवन डी वेलकम्स यू इन द शिरडी साई इंकारनेशन साई रिसाइडेड इन अ डायलैपिटेटेड मजीद कॉल द्वारका माई ही हैज डिस्क्राइब that masjid dwarka mai like this this is our dwarka mai who looks after one and all who ever sits in this masjid she assures her children fearlessness and frees them from worry this masjid mai is very gracious she is the mother of all the simple hearted devotees who ever may encounter any difficulties she will instantly protect him without a doubt once one sits in her lap is bound to attain salvation whoever rests in her shade will always derive happiness this is dwaraka whose gates are open to all the place where Doors are open. Doors are open to people of all castes and creeds. For accomplishing the four purushardhas is called dwaraka. All four types of devotees are showered with grace and blessings here. Sri Desai had asked devotees to construct a temple of Sri Krishna in the Bhuti Vada. This is now Sri Sai Mandir. In the second incarnation, Sai has created a new dwaraka known as Prasanthanilayam. People of all castes, creeds, and religions are welcome here. Just like in Dwaraka Mai, the four types of devotees: Artha, seeking help. अर्धार्धी सीकिंग वेल्थ जिज्ञासु सीकिंग नॉलेज एंड ज्ञानी सीकिंग विजडम और ब्लेस्ड यर फॉर एकम्प्लिशिंग द फोर पुरुषार्धास ऑफ धर्म राइचसनेस अर्धा वेल्थ कामा गुड डिजायर एंड मोक्ष लिबरेशन दिस ए A story of Sai devotees named Sri Sham Juvale from Mumbai. He wrote a book which was blessed by Swami. At the time, a special event was being celebrated at Shirdi to commemorate the completion of eight years of the Samadhi of the Shirdi Sai Avatar. this sham juwale attended the celebration and carried this book along with him when he went near the samadhi of shirdi sai the electricity went off unexpectedly there was a total darkness only the effulgent idol of shri sai nath was visible in the dim light of the burning oil lamps suddenly he could see sri sat sai baba standing behind the samadhi with a gentle smile on his face and sham was overwhelmed and tears of bliss started rolling down his cheeks he bowed down in reverence and placed his head on the samadhi just then the power supply was restored a noble devotee was blessed with darshan of parthi sai krishna in the vicinity of shri sardi shri sai's holy dwarka mai it's really wonderful to note these leelas miracles village of puttaparthi rests on the banks of chitravati river i 
Ukraine. This river originates from the Nandi hills. The hills are shaped like the Nandi, large Shiva's vehicle, the bull. So they have derived the name Nandi hills. The kings from the Chola dynasty constructed a Shiva temple here during their reign. Whenever divine incarnations have appeared on earth, they have selected settlements along the banks of rivers as their places of birth. Sri Rama was born in Ayodhya on the banks of Sarayu River. Sri Krishna was born on the banks of Yamuna. Shri Sai too was born near river bank in Patri village to Devagi Ramma and Ganga Bhav. In the same manner, Sri Satsai Baba chose his birthplace on the banks of the river Chitravati. In childhood, he would sport with his friends on the sands of this river. Before Prashantanilayam was constructed, Swami would go to the Chitravati river every day along with his devotees. He would sit on the sands and sing bhajans and impart instructions to them. He also performed a number of miracles on these banks. He would move his hands through the sands and materialize rare idols for his devotees. He has manifested several gems, conches, yantras, pens and even copy of the Bhagavad Gita and delighted his devotees. After spending long hours on Chitravati sands, when the devotees, especially the young children, would feel hungry, Swami would move his hand through the sands and materialize hot Mysore Pak, dripping with ghee and steamy vadas. And these eatables would not have a single grain of sand stuck to them. How blessed were those devotees. We have the good fortune to witness these miracles. This is the story from the time when Swami used to reside in the old mandir. It was the monsoon season. The rain started coming down heavily. The torrential rainfall just would not cease. This constant rain caused a rise in the water levels of Chitravati River. The water flooded the banks and started flowing towards the village. It seemed everything would soon get submerged in the water. In the time of the Krishnavatar, when the waters of the Yamuna rose and started flooding Gokulam, the people had prayed to Sri Krishna. In the same manner, the villagers of Parthi had only one refuge, Swami. The flood water started flowing towards the mandir. Just as the Yamuna yearned to take Charanas Parsha or Padalamskar of Sri Krishna, the waters of the Chitravati too yearned to touch the lotus feet of Sai Krishna. If the water level had risen any higher, the temple and the house of the devotees would have been submerged in it. Was it difficult for Sai Krishna to perceive this? He rushed out and allowed the water to touch his lotus feet and commanded the water, enough, no more, now go back. And the river Chitravati, sanctified by touch of Prabhu Sai, calmed down and the water started receding rapidly. How wonderful it is. We must have heard a word, Shakti Pradaya. Shakti Pradaya. 
meaning one who bestows energy or shakti. Sai Baba is Shiva Shakti incarnate and he bestows strength, vitality and wisdom upon his devotees. From Shiva we receive bliss and Shakti grants us vitality, fortitude and intelligence. In the life of Bhagavan Sri Sat Sai Baba, who is the bestower of strength, we find many instances where he has transmitted special powers and we are able to witness its effects. In July 1957, Bhagavan Baba visited the ashram of Swami Sivananda at Rishikesh. Swami Sivananda seated in a wheelchair, went along with his disciples to welcome Bhagavan Baba and greeted him by joining both his hands together. Bhagavan Baba raised his Abhaya Hasta, a protecting hand, Hasta the hand, Abhaya be fearless and blessed everyone. The next day, Baba moved his hand in a circular motion and materialized a Rudrakshamala of 108 beads, 108 beads, just imagine, set in gold. He put it around Swami Shivananda's neck. He also materialized Vibhuti and smeared it on his forehead. During his stay in the ashram, Bhagavan Baba gave a discourse to Swami Shivananda and his disciples every day. One day Baba materialized some fruits and vibhuti and asked Shivananda, Swami, to eat it. From that moment onwards, there was a dramatic improvement in Swami Shivananda's health. The same Swami Shivananda who had gone to welcome Baba in a wheelchair initially, the moment he became recipient of strength from Bhagwan, was able to now stand on his feet. Later, he himself walked with Bhagwan to show him the ashram and its surroundings with great enthusiasm. This is how Shiva Shakti incarnation, Bhagwan healed the great ailing yogi and brought him back to normalcy. Well, this incident represents just one example, but there are innumerable noble devotees who have been blessed with wisdom and vitality through Bhagwan Baba's grace. In 1961, Bhagwan Baba visited Badrinath along with a few select devotees. The purpose of this pilgrimage was not only to secure the darshan of Badrinath for his devotees, but also revitalize the Shakti, divine potency in the Atma Linga, which was installed under the idol of Narayana. This Atma Linga was given by Lord Shiva himself to Sri Shankaracharya. Baba retrieved it from its hidden place and sanctified it with all the rituals. He also gave an opportunity to all his devotees to have darshan of this Atmalinga and then sent it back to original place after empowering it with divine potency. Later, he also empowered the Jyotirlinga in like manner at Somanavi temple in Saurashtra. He visited Dwaraka, Pandarpur and Sri Sailam to revitalize the divine powers in the respective idols. Such things are possible only for Shiva Shakti incarnation. That is our Bhagavan. Sri Satya Sai Baba.
Well, we also must have heard of another word, Sharanagata. Sharanagata means the one who has surrendered. There is another word, Trana, meaning to protect. Sharanagata, Tranaya. Sharanagata, the one who surrendered. Trana means protect. So, a devotee who offers his body, heart and soul, at Swami's divine lotus feet can be called Sharanagata. In all the earlier divine incarnations, God has always protected those who have completely surrendered to Him. In Ramavatar, Prabhu Ramachandra declared, Whosoever surrenders completely to me, however sinful he may have been in his past life, I will accept him. In Krishna Avatar, Sri Krishna has said, Mamekam Saranam Vraja, meaning thereby surrender to me alone and I will take you across and liberate you. In the Shirdi incarnation, Sainath has declared, is it possible to find that anyone who has surrendered to me has not been protected? Show me, show me such a person. Meaning, thereby, whoever surrenders to me completely, I promise to take him across this ocean of life. Sainad also says, I will also carry your burden. This is my promise to you. In this present Sajjai avatar, Swami says, surrender completely and save yourself. Kuppu Swami was a Swami's childhood friend. They were both studying in the same class and were best friends. Wherever Swami went, Kuppu Swami always accompanied him. One day, as they were talking to each other, Kuppu Swami said to Baba, Swami, we devotees love you so much that if required, we can even offer our life for you. Swami interrupted him and said, Speak for yourself. Why do you give assurance on behalf of others? Why? After a few days, along with his devotees, Swami walked through a forest. Suddenly, he cautioned his friends to keep quiet and warn them. See, there is a ferocious tiger approaching us. All of you run away. The tiger may even want me as his prey. So hurry up, run. As they saw the ferocious tiger, everyone ran away. Kuppu Swami and two others waited there. Kuppu Swami held on to Swami's feet and closed his eyes tightly. Soon he heard Bhagwan Baba's words, Now you may go back. And the tiger went back. He commanded the tiger to go back. Swami then asked Kupu Swami to get up and said, Oh, you are still here. Why did you not run away? Where are all your friends? About whose devotion you are giving me assurance that day? Kupu Swami replied, Swami, wherever you are, I am bound to get protected. They saw Kupu Swami, devotion and surrender towards Bhagavan Baba remain for all time. In 1976, Kupu Swami fell seriously ill. Doctors diagnosed it to be blood cancer. Weak and ailing Kupu Swami came for Swami's darshan. On meeting Swami, he started talking as if he was to pass away. Soon, he said, Swami, I am quite certain that at least in this life I have not sinned. But if I am meant to suffer this illness, I would prefer to give up my life at your feet. No sooner did he hear these words, Swami spoke in an authoritative tone. Have I brought you in this world along with me on the same day? To let you die this way? I have cancelled your blood cancer today. I have cancelled your blood cancer today. 
and from that moment kuppu swami was cured of leukemia the cancer this was made possible only due to kuppu swami's intense devotion and total surrender to bhagwan baba right from the childhood sai ram lau saw those who surrendered to him completely let us surrender to sai ram thank you meet again